Hello, everyone, and welcome to Inside Healthcare. As summer begins, Minnesota health officials are warning that ticks carrying Lyme disease are especially bad this year. Some of the highest risk in the country for Lyme disease exist right in our area. We welcome back Dr. Rob Anderson with Urgency Group. Glad Thank to have you. you back with us. Pleasure to be um, back. Before we talk uh, specifically about the ticks, what is Lyme disease? We've heard a lot about it. What, what exactly is that? So Lyme disease, it's just a bacterial infection that we get from ticks. So we get it from the black-legged tick, commonly known as a deer tick. It's not transmitted through the wood tick, which we often see as well. That's the larger tick. The deer tick is a really tiny little one that sometimes is actually tough to see. When it's transmitted through um, that tick, it's actually in the nymphal stage or the smaller stage. So it's, it is truly difficult to see the tick, but once the tick bites on you and starts to feed on you, then you actually start to see the tick because it get, becomes engorged with your blood. Uh -huh. um, and then you can actually uh, see it and then hopefully remove it. But. And um, if you don't see it right away, what would be some of those early symptoms that you've been bitten by one of these ticks? Yeah, certainly. So if you are bit by the tick, hopefully you'll see it. Um, I always recommend if you're going to be out in the woods or camping, hiking, going through you know tall grasses to check yourself. But <clears throat> if you don't find the tick, you know, um, signs of Lyme disease may be uh, a rash called erythema migrans. It's a bullseye rash, or kind of just like a target symbol. Typically, it surrounds where you were bit, uh, but not necessarily always. And other signs of Lyme disease could be, you know, just very vague symptoms, headache, muscle aches, um, joint aches. Which could well. be just about anything. It yeah. can be, which is yeah. kind of tough. So you always have to have a high index of suspicion that you've been bit by a tick. And are they tend to be at certain areas of the body or anywhere? They truthfully can be any place. Mm -hmm. um, typically when somebody is walking through the tall grass, is what the ticks like to do is they, tall, they crawl the grass up to the top of the grass, they wait there until they detect your carbon dioxide and that's how they know that you're walking by and as soon as they start to feel the grass has moved, they drop and typically they fall down onto the legs and they kind of crawl up the legs and they can crawl any place on the body. And what about like if you have a pet too that picks up one of these ticks and all of a sudden... Oh, certainly. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, they can bite the animals as well, the dogs, very common. Or come off the animal and go on to you then too. They can, yeah. So you could have a dog that's running out in the woods and you're in your house and all of a sudden, you know, you, you sit down and your dog comes to, you know, cuddle with you and you look and wow, there's some ticks crawling wow. in and they start crawling on you. So you always have to have a high index of suspicion and checking yourself and your animals for ticks. I remember the one time I went up north in, in northern Wisconsin and I all of a sudden, everyone kept saying, warning about the ticks, ticks. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I had one, I was like a panic, oh, what do I do, what do I do? Yeah. So how do you get rid of the ticks? How do you get them off of you? <clears throat> well, you know, essentially all you need to do is grab the tick as close to the skin as possible. Um, you want to grab it at the head. Oftentimes if the tick has been in you for a while, it's kind of embedded in the skin. So it's actually important to grab the tick near the skin, not necessarily on the, the belly or the body of the tick, and, and just directly pull it out. You know, there's a lot of you know, old wives' tale to put some alcohol in it or to take a, a match, light the match, and then... I was hearing the match thing, and that yeah. sounds scary in and of yeah. itself. You yeah, know, you blow it out and touch the tick. Sometimes the, the theory is the heat will scare the tick and it'll kind of go away, but typically if the tick is already embedded in you and the head is in you, um, then it's, it, you just have to pull it out directly. And the important thing when you pull it out is you want to grab it near the head because if you grab the body, that's actually where the bacteria that causes Lyme is stored. Oh. So the bacteria Burrelli burgdorferi is in the body or the belly of the tick. So if you actually squeeze the body, there's a chance that you can squeeze that bacteria from uh, inside the belly of the tick into the saliva and then transmit it to yourself. So that's why it's important to um, gra grasp it as close to the skin as possible and just pull it on. And if they're not able to do it, they can always go to the urgency room or? Certainly, it's a very, very common thing. People come in with ticks, you know, hard to reach places on the back, you know, it's a common place, um, you know, that the tick will bite. Um, you know, or other places as well. Um, sometimes people are just so fearful of ticks, I, you know. <laughs> like I was. I know, time, nobody yeah. wants to do it. They see it and, you know, they get really scared. They don't want to. They don't want to try to grab it. They're concerned if they can get all the tick out. So it's actually really common. Sometimes people um, are just so fearful of removing and knowing that the tick's there. So we use a little bit of a local numbing medicine to put underneath the tick so that they don't feel as much. But truthfully, it doesn't hurt too much to remove it. And um, you want to try to get all the tick out. Um, it's not important that you remove every tiny little it's a bitsy piece. Most of the tick will eventually come out, but you want to try to remove most of it. So let's say that you've been bit by the tick, you got it out, but you're starting to feel some of these symptoms. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they're not in your head, yeah. but that you really are experiencing some of these yeah. symptoms. What can they do? Yeah, certainly. So if you come into the urgency room uh, within maybe 36 or 72 hours of finding the tick and removing it, there's actually a dose of medicine that you can receive that prevents Lyme disease. Oh. So it's a great option. 
so nobody wants to get Lyme's disease. But if you come in soon enough after being bit by a tick, we can give you just a one-time dose of a medicine, an antibiotic, and then that will help prevent Lyme's disease. But if you start to develop the erythema migrans or that bullseye rash and the headache, fever, body aches, at that point, likely you have Lyme's, and then you have to go on the antibiotic for several weeks, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. So besides the, the ticks, and they also carry some other diseases too, right? Some of the ticks that we yeah, have to but those are rare. There's a, yeah, there's a very rare virus that's since been found in ticks. Um, ticks can also cause tick paralysis. Um, you know, these are very, very rare things um, that are uncommonly seen. What about the, there's a spider, a <coughs> northern something spider? Yeah, the northern black widow, black widow. spider. Yeah. yeah. Is that something we should be concerned about? Yeah, so it, I guess it is in Minnesota. Um, you know, there's about 30 different species of black widow spiders throughout the world, and this is the only one that can survive our cold winters, and it's, um, it's a, you know, it's a spider that doesn't want to be found. Um, most commonly, people who are bit by this are going through a wood pile or maybe camping, turning over a log or something like that. And They're more scared of us than we are of them. That's correct, yeah. yeah. And typically, that black widow spider will, will bite you. And uh, people often think that they've been bit by a spider because they have a little abscess formation. But the black widow spider, if you're bit by it, you will know because it sings like crazy. It hurts. Um, if you're bit on the finger, it'll just hurt. Typically, there's a lot of swelling. Sometimes you get a headache, sometimes even some weakness, and um, just unwell feeling. What about like wasp or bees? I, bees seem to be more in August or something, but mm -hmm. in the early part of the summer, are there Yeah, things? there's, I mean, there's bumblebees, there's honeybees. That's one category. And then you also have wasps and hornets. So the wasp and hornets, they can actually sing multiple times. The bumblebees and honeybees can just sting once. So we see people very commonly when they come in after a sting. And is there swelling or something? Typically or? there is. You know, there's a, the initial, ouch, I've been stung by a bee. Everybody knows I've been stung by a bee, and um, it's pretty painful. It's important to make sure that you remove the stinger. So when you remove that, you want to take a credit card or an ID card and scrape it off. You, if you imagine the stinger is a straw filled with venom, if you try to grasp that with the tweezers and pull it out of your arm or wherever, you're actually going to be squirting some of that uh, venom back into you, making the allergic reaction a little bit worse. And we always get worried about, you know, worst case scenario, anaphylaxis, you know, becoming, um, you know, nausea, vomiting, lip swelling, tongue swelling. That's mm -hmm. when you want to use your epinephrine auto injector, call 911. Keep that handy, especially yeah. if you're going in. Yeah. Wilderness, more areas and stuff. Yeah, for sure. And then um, finally, we heard a lot about Zika virus last year, and mm -hmm. that was in other parts of the world. And it seemed like most of the cases we had in here in Minnesota were people that came from, had been traveling yeah. and came back from those other places. Yeah. Anything to we should be concerned about those this yeah, year? Yeah, that's correct. Most of it is outside of the U.S. Um, it's in the very, very southern tip of Texas and Brownsville. Um, and also it was in Miami, uh, but otherwise yeah, it's all people who have been traveling to the Caribbean, Bahamas, Central, South America, Asia, Africa. Um, and the main thing that we get worried about if somebody is uh, pregnant um, or thinking about becoming pregnant, it can cause some congenital abnormalities to the unborn child. And so we get worried about that. So if you, if you are pregnant, thinking about become pregnant, you know, use caution with going to those areas, or if you do choose to go to those areas, make sure that you're wearing insect repellent, sleeping under bug nets if that's a situation too. Anything else that our viewers should be aware of um, to keep their family and themselves safe this summer? Certainly enjoy the summer. This is what we all live for, right? Yeah, um, you know, especially make, right now. Oh, it's just gorgeous outside. You know, make sure you're drinking plenty of water. Don't get dehydrated. Wear your insect repellent. Uh, check yourself for ticks. And um, certainly if you have a tick, if you're feeling dehydrated, we'd be happy to see you at the urgency room. We're in Vadness Heights, Woodbury, and Egan. We're open from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day, including weekends and holidays, and we'd be happy to see you there. Well, I know you're a very busy person, so we really appreciate you taking time to be with us again. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank Great you. Great to Joanna. always have you with us. Thanks. Thanks. Well, still ahead, we're going to meet a woman who was on that hit TV show, The Biggest Loser, and you might be surprised to learn what she gained by losing weight. You won't want to miss her interview. Stay with us, everyone. Thank you. You look incredible. Did you go tanning? Yeah. Check it out. I'm jealous. <laughs> Best spring break ever. No. You're getting so tan. Finals are the worst. I'm so glad they're over. We need some sun. I can't believe our friends are getting married. She looks amazing. Where's your tan? I can't go tanning anymore. Doctor's orders.
It's melanoma. I'm stage three. Melanoma is the second most common cancer for young women, 15 to 29. Protect yourself. Protect your friends. Stop tanning. Learn more at spotskincancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. You might remember seeing Lisa Rambo when she was a contestant on the NBC The Biggest Loser. I recently had the privilege of hearing her speak at a local women's conference and I thought you would really enjoy hearing about her fascinating story. So we're very pleased to have with us Lisa. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. I love to share my story. And I was just saying, how I mean, your message is really about what you gained when you were losing weight. You know, yeah. it's so important. Yeah, I think I think the everybody thinks about you go on the Biggest Loser to lose a ton of weight. But I tell people all the time the magic about Biggest Losers and that we all went on a game show to lose a bunch of weight is we went on a game show and we learned that we were far more capable of more than we ever thought possible. Take us back to why you wanted to go on the show, first of all, and then what was it like those first when you first got on the show? Okay, well, um, I wanted to go on the show for a handful of reasons. I had um, friends and family, well, mostly family, that um, had major health issues um, and ended their life probably sooner than, their life ended sooner than it should have because of the complications with diabetes and heart mm -hmm. issues. And I just knew that I didn't want that for, for myself. I also started to see my daughter have some of the same, actually my kids have some of the same eating habits that I had, and, and I didn't want them to have the same problems as I had. You know, I had been someone, I was over 200 pounds when, in high school, and just battled the weight beast my whole entire life, and, and I just didn't want to have that for my kids. So I knew that, that something had to change, and I wasn't able to figure it out, and I thought, why not the biggest loser, and why not me? Well, and they only have a handful of people every year, so every, every season or episode. So how did you get on and what was it like? So the, the, the casting process is, is long and it's uh, difficult. And I actually, try, I actually, actually auditioned uh, three times before I actually wow, made the show. Determined. So I knew that this was going to be um, the answer. Um, but I went through three times. Season 14 was third time is a charm. Uh, I, I got my key to the ranch and there was 15 of us and out of this huge number of people who, who want to be on the show. So I know that my opportunity to be on The Biggest Loser was a blessing. Um, now I was a Biggest Loser super fan before I got on the show, so I had a lot of preconceived ideas on how what it was going to be like when I got there. Um, I thought there was going to be some sort of orientation process. They were going to show us all the everything, but that is not how it went at all. Like we got out of the vans, and they're like, "Okay, we need the guys over here and the girls over here." And they started putting a, 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 our wardrobe, and we came out, and they started mic packs. They're like, "Okay, here we go. There's some people up here that want to meet you." We were like in the Biggest Loser gym within like half an hour of being on the ranch. It was crazy. And it sounds like a nightmare too. It was. <laughs> you know what? I got my key to the ranch. It felt like the the, the like all of my dreams were coming true. Like you won true. the lottery, almost. Yes. Yeah. And then I got there, and we're we we I got on uh, Delvet's team, and then we walk into the gym, and they're like, "All right, let's go." And like, <laughs> like now, like we, like, I don't like I had never been in a gym before ever before that first minute moments on the ranch. So I didn't know how any of the equipment worked. I'm like, this is not going to be good at all. Did you start thinking, what did I get myself into? I did. Well, Delvet was my coach. Um, I had been having night terrors that Jillian Michaels was going to be my coach. And I was like, I don't know if I can do that. Well, in those first moments, we were the first cast that had the high school students. So Delvet took them out. And he's like, all right, Jillian, I need you to take my team. And now I felt like my biggest nightmare was going to come true because Jillian Michaels was going to train me on camera. I had no idea what to expect. She's like, all right, red team and white team, up on the treadmills. And we got up on the treadmills. And she's like, I need you at a 3.4. I need you at a... People started falling off the treadmills, and I was like, oh my gosh, Lisa, just don't fall off the treadmills. This is crazy. And the, and people were come falling off, and, and people were trying to quit, and Jillian Michaels was getting mad. At one point, I look across the way, and Bob's got his team over there, and they're throwing these medicine balls, and people are throwing up. Within 10 minutes in the gym, there is crying and bleeding and throwing up, and people quitting, and Jillian Michaels is losing it, and all of a sudden, there she is in front of my treadmill. Right, and she's like, "All right, red team, let's show them what you got." She goes, "I need you to up your speed." 
incline three. And I look over to Joe, who's two treadmills down, and I'm like, this thing inclines? I didn't even know the treadmill inclined, right? At that point, Jackson, who's be between us, he passes out oh cold, gosh, right? <laughs> On the treadmill, boom. He's now passed out behind me. Medics has come in, and I am looking around. This is like crazy town USA, and the anxiety starts to build in me, and I start to feel like maybe I've made the biggest mistake in my life. You know, and all the lies that you tell yourself in your head start to, to file through. Lisa, you can't do this. What were you thinking? You are not strong enough. You are not good enough. And, and I just when I was about to quit, the gym went quiet. And it went, everything went into slow motion. And all of a sudden, I got this, just this a calm come over me. And it says, Lisa, just do the best you can with what you've got. And I went, and all of a sudden, everything was easy after that. And that was probably one of the first lessons? It was my very first lesson. And so I just decided that moment, I'm gonna, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the best I can with what I've got, and we're just going to see what happens. And so I tell people all the time, no matter what situation you're in, no matter how hard it is, no matter how much anxiety you feel, just take a big breath. Do the best you can with what you've got, and I promise you what you've got will get better and better and better. I think too often we put these high expectations on ourselves to be perfect, to have it all together, and we just can't. All we can do is the best we can do, and if we just do that, we'll be, it will be golden. And you were on there for how long, actually, on the, on the, show, on the ranch? On the ranch. So I was on the ranch for five weeks, and then I got voted off. I'm going to say I got voted off because everybody was scared of me, and they're not here right now, so I just get to say whatever <laughs> I want. Um, so I got voted off, and I got sent home. And once you get sent home, you're vying for an at-home prize. And so I went home, and I got to so do it with my home like, team. So did you think, like, oh, no, it's over now or something when you were going you home? Do. When you do. When you get voted off, it, you feel this 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 feeling of defeat, like you didn't, I, I'm not going to be the biggest loser. And it was, it was really hard. Um, but that only lasted a little while because as soon as I got home to my family, they rallied behind me and they said, Lisa, we've got this. We're going to do this together. And mom, we're in it with you. And it was the best thing ever. You know, what, what felt like, um, a big disappointment ended up being my biggest win because I came home week five. I lost 20% of my weight on the ranch and 80% of it at home with my family and it changed us all. This was the first time it wasn't mom on a diet but my family eating right and healthy. And I was saying how th that you really l gained I, you know, besides that you can only do what you can do, but what were some of the other things that you gained or learned by losing weight? Well, I lost 108 pounds, That's but incredible. I gained a strength and confidence in myself to go further and to do more things and to try everything in front of me. I gained the, the confidence that I can dream big and I can go for it and that all things are possible. I gained uh, a, a healthy lifestyle and, and an active family and a clean kitchen and, and I just, I, I gained my life back. I say all the time, I used to be the comp most confident, insecure woman in the room, <laughs> right? I, I had this, this sense of strength instead of a true strength and I, I gained true strength in my time with The Biggest Loser. What about um, learning tips, things that you learned about yourself that, uh, about how to lose weight, how it's an effective way to not only lose it, but keep it off, how to manage um, it? I think that's the biggest thing. It's, they say it's easy to lose. I don't know about that, but, you know, like keeping it off is the main thing. I will say for sure is I think losing weight is the easy part. Maintaining your weight loss is the hard part, um, which is something I still battle with and something I still struggle with. It's, it's, it's a, I tell people, everybody, it's a journey. It's not a quick fix. So you have to give yourself um, grace and discipline and keep, keep at it. Um, but really, I have found that some of the key things for, for losing and for maintaining is one, get yourself into a network of people who, who get yourself your, find your tribe. So I don't know if that's at a gym or, or you're collecting a group of ladies. I have a walking group that we walk all the time. For sure. I, week, I yeah. think accountability is key. Yeah, because it's like so many mornings, I don't want to walk today, but it's like I know they're waiting for me, so I need to go out and do that. Right, you never want to get out. And then I say another thing is, is, is guard your kitchen. If, if your kitchen is, is full of real whole food, 
um, you're going to eat real whole food. Uh, everyone, like, we don't have chips and we don't have cakes and we don't have ice cream at our house. And, and it just makes my house this safe zone because I will tell you, all the treat, treats and, and cheats that you want, they're readily available to you everywhere you go that you don't need to have them at your house. Because I will tell you, in a late night when, you're, when you are tired and hungry and emotional, and the, the ice cream always wins. So just don't have it at your house. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have it at your house. And I bet that treats are probably have a different meaning for you now. Before it was probably related only to food, and now it's not. Um, well, treats, what's, what's awesome is that treats have become treats again in our house. Um, we used to be, you know, we would have cookies or cakes on, on a daily basis, and now we have it on an occasional basis. Treats have truly become treats again, but I also am a big fan of non-food rewards. I, I really am not a, a reward myself with food, so I like to reward myself with time with friends and time for myself and those kind of things. I love yeah. that. That's great. So after you lost all this weight at home, you go back for the finale, and... <sighs> finale is... The great, if you've never watched The Biggest Loser, you gotta tune in to a finale episode. Um, so the whole, the whole process of going out to finale was awesome. I remember going finale dress shopping with my mom and all of my cousins and sisters. It was funner than shopping for my wedding dress. Um, I got to finale, I, I pull out this pale pink dress that I picked out that was perfect and wardrobe I was like, that's nice, but that's not what you're wearing. And they put me in this red dress that I, I never would have picked out for myself in these silver strappy shoes. And I remember the night before, um, standing with wardrobe, and, and I'm in this the, the room, and I'm looking at myself in the mirror, and I'm just standing there, and I'm like, oh, girl, who are you? You're the, you're the girl who never finishes anything, and look at you. You did it. You did it, and, and you didn't compromise your, your meal plan or your workout plan. You didn't compromise anything, and look it. You finished. And, and in that moment, I knew that I had won. I knew that it did not matter how the, the scales played out the next day. I knew that, that I could finish what I started. I could, I could go through and make anything happen. It was, it was incredible. I tell people all the time, there's power in finishing. Um, finish what you start, because I, I really I was someone who never finished anything. And I bet coming back too was just seeing everybody. Yeah. You know how people had transformed and changed as well. Now, all, yes, when we all come back to the <laughs> finale, we all get to now see everybody's at-home work. Um, and I left week five, so I hadn't seen anybody like since the very beginning. And we all come back and everybody's... And you take this months in advance before it's actually so on there's, TV, So there's three right? months um, where everybody's on the ranch, and then there's a three-month gap where everybody's at home. So I probably hadn't seen anybody in five months, six Five months, yeah. Wow. And it was it was it was remarkable. You know, you, you were like, oh my gosh, look at you! Like, who are you? And, but the 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 fun thing is, is to watch how everybody transformed from the inside out. How to watch how everybody walked a little differently and held the shoulders back and head held high and and had this confidence that that was un unmistakable. Like you just knew that that they there was pride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and people just look so healthy. Healthy. It's hard to like, you know. It's so intangible, but I mean, obviously, you can have real health benefits. But when you see someone who's so healthy, it, it just radiates. It's, like a, you. it's amazing what real whole food will do for you. <laughs> it's amazing what a lot of water will do for you. Um, but yeah, when you're when you're healthy and you feel good, it, it just it it, it 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 shines from the inside out. Yeah. So this was a few years ago, and since then, you're, you know, it's really transformed your whole life. You've changed totally, you said. Uh, it really, Biggest Loser changed the trajectory of, of my entire life. Um, I've switched careers. I've, I've changed my kitchen. Um, my whole family is happier and healthier. Um, I, 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 I like to share uh, my, my family's before and after pictures because I didn't put my kids on a diet, but... but going to real whole food, you could totally see how it transformed both, all of us. I lost weight, my husband lost weight, um, but really it just, I keep telling my, my goal in life is to just remain happy and healthy. 
and strong. And, and my goal now is to help other people to be happy, healthy, and strong. So I've, I've, I've now not working at the school anymore, which was a hard decision, but now I'm a weight loss coach down at Riverfront Athletic Hub, and I walk other people through hundreds of pounds of weight loss, oh, which is super wonderful. awesome. And then I get to be a motivational speaker, and I get to travel around the country and inspire people to dream big and go for it, because why not you? And to, to help people to walk into their, their own true strength instead of standing behind these facades of strength. So much great advice. Final advice that you want to give our viewers? Final advice I want to give my if viewers. If someone's sitting out there and they've been struggling with their weight or their self-esteem, I mean, what would you say to them? I would tell, I tell people that don't wait. Don't wait. I tell, I didn't need the biggest loser. I came home and, and I came home and all of the resources were in my community. There was personal trainers, there was a gym, there was a nutritionist, all of like, it was like I came home and I felt like Dorothy <laughs> like, like, right? Like, it was right here oh, all like along, feeling, and I didn't like, yeah. even, and I didn't even see it. So, if you are sitting there and you are feeling alone, reach out to the people in your community. Don't wait and dream big and make it happen because you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And you know, it doesn't take a. I mean, it, sometimes you know you want to invest in some of that, but you you can just walk you can just walking is walk. the greatest you is the walk. greatest thing you can do and Any and, and there are, everyone has a neighbor or a friend or that that will walk beside them and and and, and through the through the whole process sometimes you just have to ask right well lisa awesome to have you with us what a great story thank you so much thank you appreciate it Anytime. thank you so much thank you for joining us we'll see you back here next month on inside healthcare we'll see you then everyone